What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I want to go into some advanced tips and tricks for the Novation Circuit tracks. I've spent a bunch of time using this thing at this point and have also dug through the manual and some other uh, resources online and have come out the other side with an advanced tutorial on a bunch of in-depth features, ways to get more out of this device, and also some very much requested features that I haven't yet covered. So without any further ado, let's start off with what is a very requested feature, but one that's kind of hidden in here, and it doesn't work quite in the way you'd expect, but it's really nice. I'm talking about chromatically flipping samples in a way that's actually somewhat reliable. So let me play this beat I've got here. Pay attention to uh, the little pluck sound. So that is a sample. I'm just using uh, the built-in pack that comes with the circuit tracks by default. There are not multiple versions of this living in here. This is just one sample. So the way to do this, I picked this up from Calc in one of his live streams, is to go to your drum programming window. You notice I've also engaged sample flip here. And if I was to try to use step automation by hitting record and selecting a note, that gives me control over the pitch uh, just on a step-by-step -step basis. The problem is you can't actually hear what you're working on, and this pitch is not quantized to any sort of scale. It's just continuous. And so without any audio feedback, it's really hard to actually make this reliably make any sort of melody. However, if you go to velocity, I can now select what's on the step, hear it, hit record, select the step, wait for it. I can now reliably tweak this by ear while step automating it. Like, it's still fairly fiddly. I'd love to see a way to, like, temporarily quantize this to a scale, but regardless, this is a workaround that uh, can be useful. I would keep melodies made with this fairly simple just for the sake of reducing frustration, but it does work. I've also used that trick a bit with 808 samples. Up next, let's talk briefly about packs on here. I showed in my Novation Components tutorial, link at the end of this video, uh, how to do stuff like setup MIDI CCs and how to work with packs. One thing to note that you can do just directly on the circuit tracks is duplicate packs. So let's say that uh, I have filled up all my project slots and I don't want to load the pack on here uh, anew. I don't need to. That's gonna take its time, but uh, by doing that, you can duplicate a pack just directly on here, no need to connect to components. So if I've got a pack that I really like that I wanna keep using, I can absolutely do that on the fly. So now I've got my duplicate living here. I can go to that, absolutely no problem. Moving into projects now, let's talk about changing colors. Super easy to do, hit save, and then you can cycle through uh, your session colors, hit save again, now that will be set to whatever color that you just selected. This is super nice for organization. Also on the note of projects, as many of you already know, projects can function a lot kind of like mega patterns. So for instance, this is fairly well known for the circuit and is great for building up full arrangements. What you can also do is change it instantly. So check this out. And it even picks up kind of where it left off just in the middle of everything if you hold down shift and select a new uh, session. Which could definitely be used to create some more kind of interesting arrangements or switch something in a big hurry if you realize that you were a little bit late on switching to a different session or something like that during a live jam. Up next, let's talk scenes. This is something that I haven't seen covered super in depth, so hopefully I can shed some light on this. Because for one thing, uh, something that we lose with the tracks is the ability to chain patterns out of order, which is really sad. Uh, I hate to see it go, but there is a workaround. So let me uh, show you what I've got going on in this beat. And then 
there's a version of these chords with no melody uh, stacked on top of them. So to make this into a scene, go to Mixer, hit Shift, and whatever you've got pulled up in the pattern window will get like saved to that scene that you hit Shift and select a scene. So now if I select a new scene, that'll just have all the default stuff selected. If I go back to Mixer and select this scene, that'll have all the stuff that I already selected. So I can do the same. Let's just open an empty scene, select this bass, the chords with the melody on top. This is the way that it should be. Hit Shift, select this one. Now that's living on here. And let me double check what the drums are doing. Okay, so that's all good to go. So now I've got my two scenes here. I can also chain these together. So this is how you would go about uh, using the workaround of scenes to chain stuff out of order. You would just create all your patterns and then you would very carefully assign patterns scene by scene. You do have to chain the scenes in order, but the scenes can contain whichever combination of patterns you could possibly want. And so let's say that, for example, I want to chain uh, these four patterns in reverse order. I would set scene one to have this pattern in it. I would set scene two to have this pattern in it. Scene three would have this pattern. Scene four would have this pattern. And then I would just chain the four scenes together and we'd be good to go. Let's address another thing. And this is kind of a workaround to address a little problem that both circuits have. And this is its limited polyphony. Six voices of polyphony is pretty good, but it's easy to get over ambitious and it can start to create problems. You've probably heard in this chord progression a few dropped notes. And the reason for this is that I basically have more than six notes playing at a time. It doesn't sound like it because the chords are never more than like four notes, but this patch rings out a bit. And so some of the notes are still going while new notes try to come in. And so that's how you hit your voice limit. The workaround for this is pretty simple and quite doable. So let me just demonstrate it on the fly here. Let me get to chord only scene right here. So first of all, this is a patch from a pack that was made for the OG, so I have to find my release settings in here somewhere. Here we go. So there is now no release on this sound. I know it sounds like it. That's because there's some effects on here, so let me get rid of those just to make it extra clear. So as long as I hold it down, it rings out. It stops instantly now. So then I just need to go into each pattern, check gate on each chord. So this is going for the entire length of the pattern and will cut off right at the end of this pattern, right when the second pattern kicks in. Let me double check the gate on this one as well. And that's the same for all four patterns, if I recall correctly. So now when I play the whole part, No notes that I don't want to overlap are overlapping. The only notes that are overlapping are the notes in the chord that I put in there on purpose. Everything else stays out of each other's way. And then you can kind of hide that and have the chords bleed into each other a little bit without hitting your voice limit by adding reverb and delay. So let me just mute all this stuff. Get some reverb. Some delay. So because the end of each chord butts right up to the beginning of the next chord, we're never gonna have any dead space in here and we're not really gonna miss having a nice long release tail. Everything sounds a little more continuous and kind of melds together a little bit better. Up next, let me show you how to get a strum effect. I'm gonna keep using these chords here. So they do have a little bit of attack, so that'll work fine. The way you do this is go to gate, hit it again to get to micro steps. And you'll see here, you have controls for each note. And by the way, this will also work on the original circuit. And these are your micro steps here. So I'm gonna leave this one as it is. The second note in the chord, I'm gonna nudge it forward quite a bit. This third one, nudge it forward even further. 
and you can hear how the notes are spread out. Kind of like you're playing a real keyboard or strumming on a guitar even. You can do the same over here. That's a really nice effect to be able to uh, set up in here, add some interest to an element. You can definitely mess around with this to control how extreme you want the effect to be. I just want it to be pretty obvious, especially for the purposes of demonstration in this video. I should also mention that if you want to reset all that, so everything just starts all at once, don't select anything, just select the micro step. And it immediately sends all three notes to the same micro step. You can also just select all three of these. Send them to whatever micro step you want all at once, or just two of them. All that kind of stuff works just fine. Let's talk next about note tie. Note tie is a feature that allows you to tie a note to a note that is to come. And until that future note hits, the first note will just go on and on and on and on and on forever without re-triggering. Let me actually demonstrate that. So I've got my chord here and I've uh, removed any reverb and delay so you can really hear what's going on. You can hear that initial little attack that it's got going. Let me go to gate, hit it again to get to micro step. And there's this orange little pad here. By selecting that, I'm going to tie this note to whatever comes after it. And if nothing comes after it, it'll just drone on endlessly. I should also show you gate. I've got this set to go all the way until the next note hits. If you don't do that, it won't work. In this case, I just have this one pattern here with no next note. So it's gonna do this, check this out. Notice it doesn't re-trigger, it just holds the chord down endlessly until it changes. So it doesn't drone on endlessly, like changing between patterns still works. So the internal logic of this is that if notes are the same between two patterns and you've got note tie set up, it won't re-trigger anything. But if the notes are different, it will re-trigger. And you can even kind of mix and match notes between patterns. So for instance, let me duplicate this pattern here. So these are identical. They have this chord with note tie activated. And then this one has a different chord. Here's how that's gonna sound. Note it didn't re-trigger. And now it re-triggered because all the notes are different and there are no shared notes between the two chords versus. I know that can seem a little bit convoluted, so my rule of thumb is I would only use note tie if you wanna have a drone or a pad go on pretty much endlessly with very little change. And in that case, you'd either have one pattern just set to loop forever and ever and ever, or if you wanna have a change somewhere in there, just have one pattern, duplicate it a bunch, and then have like one lone pattern at the very end or something where the chord changes, and then have that cycle repeat. For the rest of us not making ambient music or music that has drone elements in it, you're usually gonna get more mileage out of just using pattern settings and using the pattern speed here with half speed or quarter speed activated. That is usually plenty to have a chord ring out for a long time without re-triggering, without needing to worry about note tie. But if you wanna have something drone on for even longer than that and are willing to be a bit strategic with how you use your patterns, note tie is there and it is useful and fairly straightforward to set up. Up next, let's get into things on a step-by-step -step basis, like the literal step sequencer. First of all, you can just duplicate steps if you want to. So I've got this chord here. I can literally just take this step, duplicate it to another step. You can't hear it because of the side chain, so let me mute all this stuff again. I can also clear a step. So I don't have to like activate this and remove stuff individually. I can just do that all in one fell swoop. I've showed step automation in previous videos, but let me briefly show you how this works. You hit record, choose a step, and then start messing up parameters. Then choose your next step with record still activated. This is the noise level, so this is an easy one to demonstrate. Then you can play that. And can you hear how that changes on a step-by-step -step basis? And your step automation will also be contained in that step. So if you duplicate the step, it'll carry that automation with it as well. Super nice to have. And finally, let's talk about having multiple notes of the same velocity living on one step. This is kind of a bad example because uh, this is a polyphonic patch, but you can hear the difference in velocity. I hit this really quiet versus hit it hard. 
So I don't think you have control of it after the fact, but while programming stuff in, if you hold down this and select a note, it'll record the velocity of that note. So I can select it really softly. And I can select this one to be really heavy. It'll store both of those velocities in this one step. And you can take that even further. Of course, uh, this is just a quick little example of that. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see a more kind of beginner and intermediate tutorial, you can click or tap up over here. And if you'd like to see a full review of the circuit tracks, you can click or tap down over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.